There we go. Moving through here. Lane filtering. Legal in this area, probably. Oh! Gotta, care gotta, gotta be careful. You should have been on the crosswalk. That's where you anticipate it, but... You're supposed... The crosswalk is where you're you're supposed to like really think that that's where people are gonna be, but when you're coming up to a, an intersection, just anticipate there's gonna be dum dums between every vehicle. All right, all right. We talk about that in the Smart Rider Basic Training book right now, available on MotorcycleTrainingConcepts.com. It's the brand new book, brand new book. Basic training for Smart Rider principles. Check it out. That's a little freaky. Good thing. He had good progressive front brake pressure. Stopped in time. Well, she saw him. Okay. Able to get out of that. All right, here we go. We're riding around on the interstate. Bad line of sight. Doing a quick check. Switching over. Okay, this person's switching over too. Found an escape. Got out of there. Hey, you know, things happen. We're lucky we're on motorcycles. Car drivers wouldn't be able to do that. But the thing is, why are we going 100? Here we go. So we're going to be riding right here. So the... Very bad situation. Lots of boxing uh, of, of in the lane. I don't, I don't like being right next to this vehicle. I don't like being right here. I would probably be over here because my escape would be this one pretty easy. Plus, if I was off to the side, I could see pretty far. So line of sight, planning a ride, that is the big thing here. Big thing here. So he's going to do a head check. He's going to go ahead and switch over. Okay, switching over. Now, he's going to choose to switch over multiple lanes at once. I wouldn't do that. Um always do one lane at a time so he's going to do this though he's going to switch lanes i don't know if they blurred this out or not but i do know we were going about 100 towards the end we are accelerating through here but as soon as you're like hey i'm gonna go this way oh what is this person doing they're doing this too you have pretty much two options you can get back into this lane which is going to be a hard swerve to the left or you can commit to your original action uh but then you're gonna have to find an escape path and he found the escape path he's gonna go around it and then move on with his day uh it's still what the heck happened? What happened to my... There we go. I'm losing ink in my pen. Uh, you got to be very careful with that. So, found the escape path, got through there, moved on. But there's at least triple digits there. Looks like 97. And now it's like 10-something. Okay? So, you got to be careful with that. So, we're going to... Are we trying to get from point A to point B as quick as possible? Are we already doing the speed limit, or are we just trying to go faster than everything? Because if we're trying to go faster than everything, this is, these are the actions we take to go faster than everybody. If we're just trying to ride with traffic, and if we're just doing the speed limit, we just position ourselves in a better spot so we can see good space cushion, good escape routes, and we're kind of done, right? We're done. We don't need to put ourselves in these situations if we're just doing what we're supposed to be doing. If we're hauling ass and trying to get around traffic and get away from traffic, and try to get in front of all traffic, that's because we're going to have to haul ass. And then we start doing stuff like this. If we just position ourselves off to the side and just doing the speed limit, we're good. We're done. But if we keep doing these things, we're, we're increasing our actions, increasing our chances, increasing the situations that we could have a close call, increasing the chances of having a crash. That's why I don't like getting from point A to point B as fast as possible. I'd be listening to music and just relaxed. Instead of putting myself in that situation. All right. So the driver on the phone decided to move over into my lane. Hey, why do you think this happens? He recognized it. Random causes. Random causes. Now, what did he do to get out of it? Accelerated out. Very good. We're going to briefly talk about this one real quick. This is really good on this rider. So you have to plan your ride. Position for safety. Locate hazards. Adapt the hazards. Navigate. Uh, threats. So right here, what he's going to see is this driver crossing over, getting closer and closer to that line, okay? So he re this uh, motorcycle rider recognized that this driver was typically kind of like right here, and now we're right on the line. So we're getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to that line on the left side. Grab that person's attention, grab the motorcycle rider's attention. So, hmm, that's not good. So what does he do? He accelerates himself out of here. But let's go ahead and talk about positioning real quick. So lane position one, two, and three. If he was in lane position three, you would have to do a big, wide arc at a high speed to get out of there. So one thing I like about this is that he positioned himself uh, right away for safety. We have this big shoulder on the left side. He's going to position himself here because we have threats all around over here. These are the threats. There's nothing over here on the, on the left. So he did a great job. 
positioning himself. So then all he has to do is either swerve to the shoulder if needed, so navigate a threat, or just go ahead and accelerate out a little bit and get himself out of there, so adapted to it. So good job planning. Uh, it doesn't look like much when it's done correctly, but this is exactly what I want you guys to do. So let's just watch it one more time and then move on. Good positioning, seize the hazard. Oh, accelerate out. And there it is. Now keep looking forward. You have that vehicle in front of you. That's it. Good planning. Very good. All right, here we go. And here we have one of the worst behaviors of the drivers. The driver uses the ambulance passing with its signal sound to drive through faster. Okay. So they're saying that the ambulance drivers are, are the dumb dumb drivers. Let's see what happens. Okay, we moved off to the side. Very good. Okay. So Non-issue. What's going on here? nothing wrong with the ambulance driver honestly nothing wrong with the ambulance driver this car in front of the ambulance driver is not doing what they're supposed to be doing and pulling over there's a lot of training involved when it comes to being an ambulance and I say ambulance driver I should be saying that because EMTs hate it when we get called ambulance drivers uh, so the EMT the EMT or the paramedic driving um, is doing what they're supposed to be doing. This driver right here over here is a dumb dumb. All right. So what's happening is is uh, the EMT or whoever's driving the ambulance is trying to get around these vehicles. Now the motorcyclist pulled over, did what they're supposed to do. This uh, was it a Porsche? Yeah, this Porsche isn't doing what they're supposed to be doing. They just kept driving, and the uh, the ambulance is trying to get to the emergency scene. Now, you can do certain things. You can get into oncoming traffic if it's safe to do so, but at the same time, uh, EMTs and paramedics, whoever's driving the ambulance, is supposed to drive as safe as possible. last thing we want to do is create another accident. So uh, we do have to get in this guy's mirrors sometimes to push people off. Be like, hey, get your ass over. You're supposed to move over. It's by law, at least where we're at, that you're supposed to be uh, yielding to emergency vehicles. Uh, but this person's not doing it. So what's happening here is is the ambulance is getting into a position so that we are seen. We're blasting the air horn into basically the the side mirror so that it can get into the to the side. But here's the thing. This is what I I keep telling you guys. When it comes to loud pipes save lives, look at this situation. The whole thing about loud pipes save lives is that they'll hear me and they'll move out of the way or they'll see me because they heard me type thing. Look at this, an ambulance up on this Porsche's ass, and this Porsche does not either see us or care. I'm assuming see or hear. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. Your loud pipes don't do crap. So right here, what's happening is that the ambulance is trying to get around. Porsche driver's like, I'm not going to stop even though it has some brakes. You're able to do that because from what this ambulance driver sees is that people in the incoming traffic is pulled over. And the motorcyclist doesn't see that. The ambulance driver sees it. Making it. This ambulance driver, the paramedic, whoever, is making a judgment call based off of their training. Okay, So we can't judge them on that. No, no. See how everyone's pulled over? No, no. Okay, everyone's pulled over. And when it's unsafe for the driver to do it anymore, they move back into their lane. That's all that happened. And it's probably going to try again. If, if this median wasn't there, they're going to probably try it again. It's pretty dumb. It's, it's dumb, dumb stuff from that Porsche driver. Hilarious, bro. Come on, new riders. If you want to know how to ride effectively and smart, make sure you grab the Smart Rider Basic Training ebook. I talk about how to plan your ride, what the Smart Rider principles are all about, the color code chart, what patterns to look for, how to rescue another rider. Anyways, you got to just check it out. Make sure you click the link in the description. There's a discount code. It's the cheapest it's ever going to be. Only 500 people are going to be able to get the code. So make sure you grab yours now. All right, let's get back into the video. Woo! Yeah, buddy! Uh, quads are pretty dangerous. You easily crush your chest. Lots of people die. Lots of people die. A lot of kids die on quads and ATVs. Lots of kids die on ATVs.
because they like to think that hey, it's on four wheels, less skill involved. You could easily yeah. just do that, boom, crush your chest. That's why they wear chest protectors in motocross and everything, is because that, that right there, precordial thump, ooh, stop your heart, um, or crush your your sternum, yeah. break some ribs, and then right here, if the bike or the the quad does fall on you, easily crush you, easily crush you. There you go. Gotta be careful. It ain't gonna die. Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. All right. So right here, going through a neighborhood side of the vehicle, probably path of travel. We got an intersection coming up, orange stage. There it is. Hey, good job navigating that. Just slowing it down before getting to the intersection, seeing that happening, and then uh, being safe about it. So we got right here. So this sign is very, very important. This says we're gonna turn left. And then, then we have a almost like a T intersection. So you typically see signs that are like this, and then they're like this. Oh, it's kind of screwed up. Let's do it's kind of like this. And that's like the the T intersection. So it's oh my gosh, it looks terrible. It looks terrible. Sorry about that. Sorry, it looks it looks pretty bad. It looks pretty bad. But you know, hey hey, I'm trying. I'm trying here. Uh, so that's going to be an intersection. It's going to be an intersection right there. So that's going to give you a nice heads up. Hey, possible orange stage situation coming up. All right, cool, cool. All right. And plus you start to see all the traffic. You start to see all the traffic and you're like, hmm, gut reaction, lots of things, line of sight problems, path of travel violations, all these different things. Not a good situation. So we're getting into here though. And then there comes the vehicle starting to come out. Uh, side of the vehicle coming out is going to go this way. We start to see it from this distance. If we're hauling ass, it might be difficult for us to get out of the way, slow down, swerve. But if we saw that sign back there and we modulated our speed, maybe slowed it down a little bit, covered the brakes, we are prepped and ready for this situation. So all he has to do is apply good progressive brake pressure to allow this vehicle to get out because that's what the vehicle wants to do. Once that vehicle gets out of our path of travel, then we can go on, which is exactly what happens here. So when you do it correctly, it looks like a non-issue. There it is. And then we're just going to flip them off. You, know, you do your thing. You know, once you're in the safe, you know, you do whatever you want to do. All right. Whew. Are we riding around? There we go. All right. Green light. All right. Left turn. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No. I don't. It does, I know it says no left turn. It says no right turn either for trucks. Look at his sign, dude. He's gonna do what he wants to do. You see it? Are we the cops? The only my only concern right here is that if if this person stopped here, I'm concerned about traffic behind me not paying attention. That's it. So what am I going to do? I'm going to position myself for safety. I'm going to get into that right lane as soon as possible. If this person is going to hold up traffic and I'm going to get hit from behind. All right. We talk about this. We talk about planning your ride. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and mute this. We, we, we talk about planning your ride in our new book, Smart Rider Basic Training. Please go check it out. It's on motorcycle training concepts. Amount of time to react. The driver was braking at the last moment, testing the biker. Roundabout, the side of the vehicle right there. Whoa! Good job on the braking for the motorcycle rider. Good job. Saw so, you guys see that though? Like you're riding through this area right here. You're riding through this area. You know it's. Let's go back just a little bit more. We have a roundabout coming up. We should be going into orange stage right over there. Specifically identified interest, focus, and threat. Perceive the threat, right? You're ready to act. So that right there is what we're doing when it comes to uh, an intersection like this, whether it's a T intersection or a roundabout. So he's getting prepped and ready. He's looking around, locating threats, planning his ride, looking around, double checking. And then right here, we got this vehicle coming up. Okay, so he sees that. He's located it. He's in orange stage. He's prepped and ready. He just needs to roll off the throttle, get ready for very good progressive brake pressure. Sees it, sees it, sees it, sees it. Honks the horn, but he's already slowing down. So he's slowing down and then honks the horn. Did very good. We have a path of travel violation right here. Able to navigate the situation. The person slowed down probably not because of the horn. I'm going to give him a little bit because the horn probably, yeah, maybe. 
maybe. Um, but the thing is, probably saw him last second. We don't want people seeing us last second. <laughs> Did a good job, though. Got angry, moved on. This kid's ready to ride. So just teaching him the startup procedure. He's in neutral. That's good. Last thing you want to do is accidentally have it in here. The throttle looks a little sticky. Did you see that? When he pulled it, he had to like pull it back. Vam, vam. I don't think it was completely sticky. I think uh, when he did this, he had to do that a little bit. Um, when you are doing your your T clocks and you're checking your your primary controls, so your front brake, rear brake, your clutch, uh, your shifter, and everything, you're also checking the throttle. Okay, so when you with the bike off, with it off, completely off, you twist it all the way, let go. It needs to snap back to the starting position. If you twist it all the way and you let go and it just like stays or it slowly turns back or it goes only halfway, then you need to to clean that out. Okay, there's a little inside you can use, don't use water, use like a compressed air and everything, but it could also be because your cables are a little bit tight. There could be something going, yeah, exa exactly, cable routing can do that too. So that's a huge thing because you don't want to have it open and you and something happens and it's stuck open. You want to be able to, you have to twist it all the way like you 100% throttle, let go, and it needs to snap back, okay? No, it, just, it, it looked like when he did it. Yeah, yeah, see that? I, I swear, I pick up the most weird things. Look at it, look at, look at the hand. You see that? I, I, I just, I don't know why I pick up these weird things. So he lets go for a second. So he let go right there, and it doesn't snap back. You see? That that right there though, that's everybody, that's an indication that you need to you need to clean that out and you need to check your cables. Uh the paddle is just on the uh the throttle itself. That that's a that's a, a pressure paddle. So what what this thing is right here, so when he's riding, he's riding instead of having to keep it down with your fingers, you can kind of it, it allows you to just apply pressure with your with your palm. That's all that does. It's not attached to anything. So it's just, it's just a, you're able to not grip the whole time. It's like, oh, my hands are getting a little numb. So you just kind of do this instead. It's not safe. It's almost like suicide grip with bench press. So he's able to do that. That's all that is. It's, uh, it's not cruise control. It's just it allows you to rest your hand a little bit. That's all it is. Yeah, it's not a locking type. So look at this. Gosh, the... So check your check your bike. So he lets go and it doesn't snap back. And then he has to twist it back up. We talk about that in the Smart Rider book. Woo! I love seeing these real life examples. What is up everybody, Dan and the Fireman with Motorcycle Training Concepts. Today, we're gonna to be learning how to ride a big cruiser motorcycle. But before we do that, we need to learn the instrument cluster and we need to learn all the primary and secondary controls. So that is what we're gonna focus on today, but make sure you check out this video series because we're gonna be learning a lot. All right, everybody, what we have here is just our handlebars and everything. That's where we're gonna start off. Now we're gonna be focusing on some motorcycle controls, the primary controls and everything. But right here is the key fob that you get from Indian Motorcycles for your 2022 Indian Chief. There's no key to turn, but on your motorcycle you might have a key to turn. So that's going to be your ignition switch. What we have here is going to be, instead of that turn, we don't have it, so we got to push the button and it only works when you have the key fob next to you. So we're going to wait for that to uh, start all up. So we have 
the engine shut off and the engine start switch. We have cruise control on the right handlebar. We also have on the left, let's go ahead and take this off real quick. We have on the left side, we have the horn. It's pretty loud, you know what I mean. Uh, we got the high beams, low beams, and we also got turn signals and we can adjust the controls up here on the dash with these buttons. Now that's something that you might not have on your motorcycle because, uh, well, this is new stuff, it's new technology. Now on this, we have multiple different scenes, multiple different uh, displays for your motorcycle. If you have something like this, it could be looking similar. If not, you have just that analog dash. It's probably just gonna look something like this and that's all you really have to worry about. So what we have on the right side is going to be one of the primary controls and that is the throttle. So this is what's gonna be a huge importance to the next few videos or anything you do on the motorcycle. This is your front brake lever right here. So this is for the front brake. Remember the front brake is at least 70% of your braking power. It could be even more when you have a sport bike. So if we move over here on the left, you notice how this side doesn't move compared to this side right here? Well, that's because this is just a normal hand grip. So that's gonna be the difference between your throttle and just the normal hand grip. And throttle is pretty much 99% of the time on your right hand. Now right here is the clutch lever. Now this one can go all the way in. Now the clutch lever removes power from the engine to the rear wheel, okay? So right here, just think of that as disconnecting power. And this is going to let power in. Now, if you notice, I was able to pull in the clutch lever pretty good. This one only goes so far. So that's the difference between the clutch lever going all the way in and the front brake lever giving you a lot of resistance and probably not going all the way in. That's what's on the handlebars. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the shift lever and the rear brake. So right here, what we have is the shift lever. Now here's the thing. If you push it down once, that's one gear down. If you push it down and hold it, it's one gear down. If you lift it up, that's one gear up. If you hold it up, that's one gear up. Now it's not gonna go slamming all the way down from sixth gear to first gear, and it's not gonna slam all the way up from first gear to sixth gear. So remember that, one down, one up, and it goes one, neutral, two, three, four, five, and then six on this motorcycle. Some motorcycles only have a fifth gear like the Indian Scout 60, but this one has a sixth gear and it's gonna be on your left foot. Now what we have on the right foot is going to be that rear brake. It, just like any other brake, you're gonna press down and it's gonna apply more and more brake pressure to the rear tire. It doesn't go up and this is gonna be on your right foot. This is the brake reservoir. And remember, press, 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 progressive brake pressure. So it's gonna be a nice and easy press, 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 press until you are starting to stop. Now you have to be careful. You don't wanna slam it or you're gonna start fishtailing like we see in these after action reviews. And all we did was go over some of the primary controls and some of the secondary controls. It is up to you to look through your owner's manual to see what each control does. But the main things here are those primary controls, that front brake, clutch lever, throttle, rear brake, and shifter are pretty universal across all bikes. But things can be a little bit different when it comes to the thumb controls you have going on there and then the different ride modes you might be having. You could have touring, be beginner, rain mode, whatever you want to call it. You can name all these different modes, standard, sport. You gotta check it all out. It's up to you though. If you like today's video, make sure you click this video right here to keep watching more. But if you want to become a smart rider, click this and grab this Smart Rider Basic Training eBook. It's gonna help you become a smart rider by planning your ride, rescuing other riders, knowing what patterns to look for, and so much more. Make sure you grab it. Link will be in the description also. I'll be seeing you around.